record to cloud. And now I should be recording. Okay. <sighs> we are recording. Um, all right, I'm going to say let's get started on this here conversation because it is sure to be an active one. Um, as I mentioned, just proposed um, a bit of a suggested agenda um, in issue number 307. Michael Dawson's adding the, the topic of, of certifications to that. I think that's a good one. Um, so any uh, any issues or, or suggestions to um, the agenda before we dive in? All right, cool, hearing none. Um, I think, for, for me anyway, um, a piece of this was really figuring out how to scope this problem because we're talking about um, kind of multiple things in our CPC meetings related to uh, infrastructure. Um, there seem to be three themes or three threads that I was picking up on. Um, one is, you know, our individual um, projects and what they need from an infrastructure perspective, their specific support needs. Um, and as it relates to jQuery, for example, you know, how do we help them um, upgrade or migrate to, to a better infrastructure? Um, there was the theme of like foundation wide infrastructure support, which is certainly something that like Brian has been um, looking a lot at, you know, how, what, what kinds of services are we providing for all projects versus what are projects kind of figuring out on their own? How do we help them eliminate a bus factor problem? And then of course, um, related to, to everybody, I think, how do we make a system that's gonna be sustainable? um for for everybody because you know speaking from the experience of of the jquery team it's um been the case where we had maybe a couple of people doing a lot of heavy lifting for a while and then those folks move on and the infrastructure that they build is not really known to other people so um i'm curious if if there are other ways of like looking at this problem that folks would see is, is um you know, maybe a different perspective or an orthogonal view or something like that. I, I think the other dimension that I've thought a bit about and we've talked in the node community is, you know, is, is the infra a good fit with volunteers and the friction that mm -hmm. around that? Mm -hmm. Right, like there's, there's concern about, you know, there's concern that if we say have paid volunteers or paid paid resources help with infra it will you know demotivate people who are not paid we're working there so it's definitely a concern the other question is is like you know for some of the things on the infra side is expecting volunteers to be available you know basically whenever reasonable going to work out long term either So maybe, 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 you know, to try and make that a little more concrete, it's sort of like, maybe we can think of it through the lens of what pieces work well as volunteer and which pieces don't work so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, oh, I see Miles has his hands up, uh, hand up, I'll, I'll let him go first. Go Miles. Yeah, so I guess, uh, um, and I've been a part of a bunch of the debates, um, especially, you know, not wanting to, to, get volunteers to not want to do the work. Um, what, what I do think though would be really helpful is like a baseline that's reliable and on-call staff that's available as, and thinking of it much more as support. So um, Brian, sorry for calling you out here, but Brian I think is a great example of a similar kind of support that we have from like a program management side where, you know, Brian does so much work in making sure that you know, our meeting agendas are ready, that things are scheduled, that um, conversations that need to be happening are happening. Um, things would not be moving forward as clearly and, and, on, uh, and on time as they are. And, and Jory is another example of this as a contractor who's been doing a lot of work in the community. And I have not seen um, anyone say, A, because Brian is doing some of this work as a contractor or because Jory's doing this work as a contractor that I don't want to do it. What I do see 
is stuff like a newsletter coming out or organization happening that volunteers would not normally do, which allow the volunteers to focus on higher level bits um, that are closer to, you know, the reason why they're helping out. Um, in, in the case of, of, the, of the infrastructure, um, I think that a lot of where we find ourselves, at least in Node, is constantly chasing our tails on keeping the lights on, that we never have time to kind of invest in growing it and building out that kind of infrastructure that we need. So while I, while I understand where people are coming from when they say it will drive away volunteers, I would like to propose that perhaps it will actually allow us to have more volunteers because when people don't feel the weight of, oh, I need to be on call 24 hours or I need to be kind of like just doing the maintenance work when they can do the bits that they're excited about, when they can get support to actually execute on their vision, um, I think that we actually will see more people drawn to working on it. Um, and I would really love to see a baseline infrastructure support from the foundation as a whole um, that gives us some shared infrastructure that projects can all rely on, whether that's subscriptions to services, a Kubernetes cluster, um, operators that we're able to contact. I don't know what the solution to this looks like, but I would very much, you know, we have 31 projects. They have very different needs, but some of the baseline needs are very similar. I would really love us to see if we can come up with kind of like a baseline infrastructure support um, for all of the projects in the foundation. Yeah, and that was sort of the lens, you know, and, and figuring out which, you know, so that it provides the pieces which are not a good fit for volunteers and for which, like you said, hopefully mm -hmm. won't discourage the volunteers. Uh, but enable them while leaving the other pieces to the projects to, or the direction or whatever it is, right? But looking at looking at it through that lens is the only it was was what I was, that was what I was suggesting there. If I could jump in on this as well, I think you know. Thank you, Miles, for the kind words. I first off, I really appreciate that. Uh, but part of what makes this possible, and I think part of what makes it easier on my end, is that uh, at least from the operation side it's very clearly defined what things need to be in a dedicated role and then what things can be done by dedicated role but don't have to. Uh, one of the examples is credential management. You know, that's, that's a, this came up, I believe, in the, uh, in the issue, in the discussion so far, is that um, one of the concerns with the current infrastructure is that in order to get access to something, you have to have access to everything. And one of the things that comes out, even if it's not explicitly stated there, is that there's a fair amount of uh, concern and responsibility that comes with that type of work. Um, and, and that would certainly add weight to the uh, <laughs> weight to when you say, I volunteer, you know, you're volunteering for more than just taking care of stuff, you're volunteering for protecting stuff. And if that stuff can be isolated and can be you know, consolidated potentially with a resource or something like that, then, it, you know, that, that would make the discussion a little easier. Of what do we carve up between what needs to be dedicated and what is, um, you know, as, as Miles put it, uh, what are the things that multiple volunteers could then take on because they feel empowered to do so? I think um, one uh, component that, and uh, Dave isn't here on the call, but um, if I'm hoping I'm representing this idea uh, that he had accurately, um, is, is this recognition too, that within a specific project community, um, like jQuery, for example, there may not be the expertise uh, for you know, DevOps type support within that particular community, but they, they definitely have, you know, a need there. And so there, there's a question of like, you know, how can we connect volunteers um, who may be interested in that kind of work uh, and that kind of open source support with opportunities like may exist with them, with some of our projects, you know, who have that need. Yeah, that's interesting. It's, it's, I, I guess the question will be, are there people who aren't necessarily like, it's not the project they're passionate about, it's the infrastructure. 
Right. And it's the infrastructure. It's the chance to, to really help them, um, you know, a project that, you know, in the, in the case of jQuery, a lot of people still depend on. Yeah. Um, I guess there, there's a question though, um, and this might be a little bit of a harsh one, but what are the goals and values of the projects themselves? And like, there is limited volunteers. And I, I know in the node project, having all these different places where, where people could put time, was a huge benefit. Um, but should that be something that, that, that is scoped per project? Is it something that should be scoped for the foundation? For many projects, is it kind of like out of scope of what they're looking for? Like, is it something that they're doing because they have to? Um, I know for Node, we've needed some significantly custom um, infrastructure, which ha has led, you know, to, to a whole infrastructure team that we have, but you know, five years, four years later, um, after the fork, um, the majority of those people are not putting in the same amount of time because they can't consistently put in the same amount of time. And our infrastructure has become a debt that the majority of the project doesn't have a skill set or interest in maintaining. So it's kind of hard. Like, I, I, I mm -hmm. feel like I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth because on one hand, I recognize and I was a part of that build team for a while. And it is a great opportunity for people to, to contribute back to the project. But the flip side of it is like, if it's not aligned with like the core bit of what the project is doing, it has the risk of, of becoming engineering debt and mm -hmm. becoming just kind of like a weight as opposed to something that empowers people, which is why we want to do it initially. Uh, Michael may have some better insight into that than I, than I do. Um, and apologies if I'm kind of glossing over it or, or. Yeah, you know. no, I mean, I, I think, I think, you know, history obviously plays in to a large extent in, in a lot of cases. Uh, in my mind, I think we, we need to do is think about what we should do and keep in mind the existing projects like Node that have, you know, fairly big infrastructure and, and so forth. I don't think we're going to change everything overnight. So I think we should focus on, you know, what do we think makes sense for like, you know, common infra, common services. Um, but keep in mind like, okay, what does that mean for the projects that already have volunteers doing these things? Is it, is it gonna be something that, that has the negative consequences we're looking at? Or is it like, yeah, it's gonna be an enabler because it removes something that they don't really wanna do anyway. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't see that we're going to be able to put in place a huge infrastructure that changes things, you know, right away. So we should focus more on the, the smaller steps we can take, which I suspect, you know, some projects will just say, yeah, we want to do that. And some pieces won't affect, you know, some of the projects anyway. They'll say, well, we've already got what we're, we're working on, but that doesn't mean it isn't useful for some of the other projects, right? You know, so if we try and think about what's the, what would be the first set of services that we would provide, that might be a good way to like, you know, think concretely about some of these problems mm -hmm. as opposed to the, the big problem itself, which, you know, every time you get into it, it's like, well, it's going to be hard to come to a consensus on an overall, yeah, go one way or go the other way, right? I guess one way to figure out what we need is maybe asking all the projects of how their current infrastructure looks like and uh, what kind of needs they have looking for, moving forward. Yeah, I, certainly understanding that somehow. I, I think possibly that the onboarding process is a way to get at some of that information. Um, Cause you know, we've just started this talking to, to the current project to put them through that process. Um, and one of the questions that um, I have been asking them from a uh, just informational standpoint is like you know what what are you currently using from an infrastructure perspective um, and the reason I'm asking that is because we have a whole bunch of stuff like in DigitalOcean and um, in Cloudflare and that kind of stuff that I don't think our old JS foundation projects are using and so we're it's kind of a uh, checking both lists sort of so to speak so we can start to maybe ask that question as part of their as part of the onboarding and then asking the question do you anticipate having any needs in in the upcoming future like say in the next year um in terms of infra and kind of get that data that way 
I think something that may also be worth um, digging into that could help with this also would be finding out what infrastructure they're currently using and what they're relying on. Um, I think we'll find pretty quickly, for example, that a large number of our projects are relying on Travis CI. Mm -hmm. um, Travis CI was acquired in the last year by a holding company. And, you know, there, there's nothing specifically happening right now, but I know that there is like a temperature that something could happen yeah. from like a risk management and hedging risk perspective. Yeah. Interesting for us to figure out like, hey, who are the service providers who we are utilizing the most? And either A, trying to see how we can like negotiate some sort of blanket contract with them to give us all kind of a better deal or alternatively try to see how we could collectively replace those bits of infrastructure that introduce risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or having a common, like basically if say we're all using Travis CI, for example, having a common approach would then maybe make it easier for us to have a help desk who could help with issues or something like that, right? Yeah. So um, I'm in my, I didn't start a note stock for this, I'm sorry. I'll try and summarize after the meeting. Um, but on my piece of paper that I'm doodling on, I've written three different threads so far. Um, one is identifying what those common needs are, which kind of gets to that, these questions that we just, asked, what are you using? What are you relying on? The second thread is what are those first services we want to say that we, that we're coming out the gate with as a foundation. And then the third thread, is how how we want to make it how e how to make it easy for volunteers. Um, so that's sort of like staffing question. Um, you know, I, I was just thinking like maybe to add to your list, like the things I can think of that every project meet off the top of my head are like probably a website, mm -hmm. um, source code control, and hosting, uh, build and then distribution. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess then that will vary, like, you know, certainly for, you know, Node, we build binaries and we have a site where we distribute them. For some projects, it may be just pushed to NPM. Um, but it's like, those are, the, those are the areas I could think of that if every project needs them, what would, what would it make sense to do to make those easier? Yeah, and I, I think historically, like, at least speaking from the JS Foundation point of view, um, we may have, for example, always helped the projects with, you know, their domain and SSL certs and that kind of stuff. But then as you go down that list of like, source control, well, you know, sure, we're, we'll help them admin their GitHub repo if they need. Um, but build and distro, that's not necessarily been something that, that the JS Foundation was super active in, with the exception of jQuery, um, because it was, right. yeah. If ahead, I can sorry. interrupt there for one second, if one of the big things uh, kind of at the forefront of affecting the JS ecosystem right now, though, is supply chain attacks, yeah. perhaps build and distro is something that we want to focus on now. I'm, I'm, I'm totally into that. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm just saying historically it's not been, and that may be part of the reason why we're no good at it is because historically it wasn't, but I mean, into it. If we want to support that, super into that. And this also seems to me like things that could become part of the Commons JS program, um, depending on what kind of infrastructure or best practices we build. Um, these are things that we could share with the ecosystem at large. Mm -hmm. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, no. Totally, totally fine. I mean, I think it's a good point to like make, you know, why we want to support in those areas. Um, Wes is here. Um, Wes, I'm curious as a um, maintainer of Express, if you're, if you know, kind of what your thinking is around needs or wants or hopes and dreams related to Infra. 
I, I didn't intend to join this meeting and necessarily participate. I meant to just listen. I'm at my desk and I'm not really in a good oh. place to participate. Okay. Um, but I do have some thoughts, but I'd rather just sit and listen until uh, later. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry, sorry, to, sorry to call you out. <laughs> That's all right. But yeah, I don't want to disrupt my coworkers. Okay. So. Very kind of you. I mean, are there any, you know, outside of the website source control build distribution, are there other things look like maybe just in terms of getting an exhaustive list, are there other things that should be on that list? Domain management? I think that could go under website or is maybe, yeah, maybe that's separate domains. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I think, it, yeah, because there, there's usually, we may have, a project may have a, a website, but they also, a lot of them also have um, little microsites for other things they may be running. So I think that's kind of separate. Yeah, sounds good. So any others people think of? I guess email and stuff, how, how, where does that fit? Yep. I, I, that's good. I would just say, I mean, there are maybe two, two different ways to approach this. One, historically, many projects have had their own mailing list infrastructure that they've managed, uh, but there were also were some that came in from the JSF where it was managed by, you know, by the JSF. Um, you know, at this point we have a groups.io subscription and we can have as many lists as we want that are on that domain. Um, if we wanted to add additional domains to it, then each one of those requires its own subscription. But I mean, I can add as many lists as we want under, uh, list.openjsf.org and, uh, there's no, no additional overhead. There's no additional cost or anything along those lines. For example, if we wanted to have an Appium maintainers list or something like that, it's that's very easy to do. I guess the question is some people may want like a vanity URL, like miles at nodejs.org or something like that. And how do we do the management of that? Um, that as well as DNS has actually been something that's been a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, like, especially with like, hey, we want to launch like a new subdomain or we want to do something with the nodejs domain. Um, I think right now we have to file a ticket with like LF's uh, IT team. Mm -hmm. um, it would be nice to remove a hop from that and be able to manage our assets without leaving our foundation. Yeah, so that's, and that brings up a good point, domains in general. So um, from, from my perspective, there are two reasonable easy ways to handle this. One is if a project doesn't want to handle it at all, then we can handle DNS for them and they can file tickets but we can also handle domain registrations and things like that and then delegate to somebody else's name, name server if the project wants to do that. Uh, the advantage of that is that, you know, Miles, in this case, it gives you full control over, over the DNS, of course, uh, but also it means that the renewal process is much more straightforward because the bills all come straight to us. So either way is fine, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, there's, uh, there are options here for everybody. Sindel, were you um, going to add something there? Yeah, I was about to sell the same thing about the mailing list and the channels that we provide them. And I think you know, Miles and Brian have summarized it. Mm -hmm. I, I think kind of going down the list um, of things that people might ask for in addition to something like a mailing list, um, there are other tools like um, Slack, uh, what do they call Slack orgs? Are they orgs in Slack? I don't know. Channels. Works. Channels. Workspaces. Yeah, oh, workspaces. That's the word they workspace, use. Workspaces, yeah. Um, you know, uh, things like that, which a project might want to have and might also want to, you know, 
have someone at the foundation or some some function within the foundation to like make sure that uh, the bus factor is eliminated. Um, but I also don't see that as like a a need that's like a nice to have for a project. One thing that you could put in as so along those lines, Jory, uh, credential storage. Mm. I mean, I'm I'm happy to maintain a central last. We have LastPass Enterprise here. Um, I can handle separate folders for different projects. If they just want to have a you know a separate neutral place to keep certain um, uh, certain credentials, particularly for sites that don't have multiple user accounts. Mm -hmm. Does LastPass? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say there just there are a few of those like. Tarsnap, for example, uh, which is used for backups. There's only one on, one login for that, so we have to share it. Uh, Michael, you were saying? Does this LastPass let you like store encrypted files with credentials in it, or you know, so for example, in, in Node, we have a whole we have like you know SSH keys that we use to access our our test machines, and we have a way that we manage who has access to those or or doesn't have access to those. Um, but it's it takes work. Yeah, I'm I, think, I, I, I didn't know LastPass gave that kind of functionality too. So I, that's what I was asking. I'm not sure that it does. I mean, I can look and see, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Okay, I was just reading more into what you said than I should have then. So, never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was thinking more credentials as in username, passwords versus um, uh, SSH keys. Right. Well, yeah, we have similarly in that same repo, we have some username passwords and stuff. But. Hey, hey, I, I found a room. Uh, just so you know, LastPass does allow you to save uh, other arbitrary encrypted things. Oh, and share them. Yep. Oh, oh, interesting. Yep. I, nice. I can see that being a common problem, and it's not necessarily a uh, now the one we, you know, what we've ended up doing actually gives you like based on groups that you're in, you know, mm -hmm. so basically people who are in the test, who have test access can get access to the test keys and so forth. So it's, it's, I don't know. Anyway, we could look at it though, but that might be something where I suspect that many projects have a similar shared resources and how do you, how do you, you know, share them among just the people you want to have access and then revoke that when you don't want them to have access that kind of stuff. So, so with LastPass, you can also do shared folders. So you could put, you could create a folder for each group and then put the keys or passwords, you know, they can all go in the same folder and right. then you share, and then you could manage it on that list type basis. Right. And then you add people in, in or out of those groups. Yep. And actually with that prodding, I just discovered that, yes, <laughs> there's a place right here where you can add an SSH key. Uh, Oh, that's excellent. And we're, we're currently using the shared folders to manage the Zoom credentials. So we could certainly do the same for this. So I, that's, that's probably a good one to put on the list. So, I mean, just uh, kind of noticing here that this particular issue of credential storage is if, you know, if we sort of address that for uh, individual projects, that is part of a step in how to make it easier for volunteers to come in and help out, um, you know, because we can control who has access to the credentials. So if, we, if there's a trusted, you know, person who wants to do something, you know, we can help them get at least access to the services that they might need to do something. Um, so that seems maybe like low, low hanging fruit, perhaps. Yeah, now we would want to, I mean, we would have to look at it to make sure that it's not like all back to one person who owns our LastPass account, but that individuals who have access can reshare those kinds of things. Well, I mean, with LastPass, I believe you're allowed to have one owner. I it could be wrong in this, but I, I mean, ours is centrally managed. So, you know, say, for example, I decided to take an unexpected uh, vacation and disappeared for a certain period of time. Um, there would still be access to my account. And that's maybe one difference between doing it as an enterprise versus doing it as an individual account. 
Can I even just mean the project having to like open a ticket or send an email versus being able to have people empowered to say, here, you have access? I think in the end, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, if, if what you're trying to accomplish is uh, having this be, say, a small project that's trying to reduce bus factor, then that's maybe a positive, but also there may be that wouldn't fit for every project, you know, in the situation that you're concerned about of having to open tickets and things like that. Um, yeah, maybe one size doesn't fit all. So I think, and I could be wrong, if you say that you let the, when you do a first initial share, if you say you can view the password, I think that then means that that account can reshare. We'd have to test that, but I believe that because I, I just went in and looked at one password that's shared with me and I can see the password and I can share it. There's another one where I can't see it and I can't share it. Um, the can't see it isn't actually able to be protected because when you paste the password into a browser, even though it's in a browser field, you can modify some CSS and still be able to see it. It's not actually. For sure. It, For sure. It, I, I meant more specifically though, the sharing. So when you do like, uh, you know, there's a sharing center and you can go in and passwords that have been shared with me, mm -hmm. I can then go and reshare with a new with a different LastPass user. So that would, oh, that yes. would mean we can federate the management of the sharing to the projects themselves, not having to open up a ticket with the, you know, the root user or whatever the you know, main. Yeah, another possibility that we could do, um, although this is getting like really into the weeds, like what we do in Node is we have a secrets repo, which has the encrypted keys for everything in there. And then there's like, it's encrypted so everyone can use their own GPG keys to decrypt it. Mm -hmm. That's a federated distributed way to do it as well. So that's another way that we could think about like secrets management, although it's a little bit more of a, you know, pain in the ass um, for those who aren't familiar with uh, GPG. Yeah, but it seems like something that every project will likely have an issue with and kind of solution would be handy. So we've got a list of, you know, I guess several different um, pieces of infrastructure, types of infrastructure that we are going to want to have some answer for. Um, websites, uh, DNS, source control, bill, distribution, email, um, credential storage, maybe Slack type things. Slack type. I mean, Slack, things. Zoom. Those sort of comms things. Yeah, maybe that's a good, communications is a good top level. Yeah. You know, your email, your Slack, your Zoom, your whatever tools you need internally to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and mean, we've always had a very vocal discussion when anybody per, you know suggests any one of the tools but at the foundation level it can probably only pick one and say we can support this and you're free to use whatever you want but if you want a free one here this is the one right right and I, I kind of feel inclined at least initially to kind of go with that kind of approach like you know here's the here's the package and this is what we're supporting as we're getting started um, if you want something else, you're free to do that. But um, I, I just think we, we, we can't at the moment really support in number of different options. No, and it gets more and more costly, right? So. Right. I mean, I, I think too, for some of this stuff that when we establish the baseline, this isn't the baseline that projects must have. It's, no. the project, it's the baseline of what's available that projects can consume if they so choose. But if they have a better way of doing it, you know, for example, Node's a great example where you, you're fortunate to have so many volunteers. Um, if that is a better way to do it, then by all means, that's um, certainly something to keep doing if it's working. Yep. Yeah, it's basically, uh, you know, here's here's a starting package. If that's all you need and you want to do that, that's great. Otherwise, you know, you're free to free to do whatever, but, you know, don't 
you can't get the same level of service. That's all. So um, as we're at almost 245, I want to maybe shift the conversation to um, the hopefully easy, which I'm putting in quotes, air quotes, easy, next steps um, we can do to start making progress on, on some of this because, you know, I'm speaking from my experience, some of, some of these questions have felt like such a hairy um, naughty issue um, that it's been hard to figure out what is the right next best step. Um, and so I think it'd be great if we could um, maybe as a group figure out what one or two of those might be and what follow on action we want to, um, what follow on actions we want to take. Do we have a good description somewhere of the things that are already in place that a project could take advantage of? You know, like the DNS management, the, uh, you know, because that would be like a starting point to, to, to say, here's, here's what you can currently get, DNS management or domain names or whatever, and then to build on, on that. I'm not sure that we have something that is like comprehensive. Um, I feel that at varying points, we've said to the projects, hey, did you know you can get this? Did you know you can get this? But I, I don't think that's that whole story has been put down somewhere and certainly not in any other format beyond like, for example, my goofy emails. Because it seems like that would be a starting point. It's like, here's what you could already get. We don't even have to do any work, right? And then you can say, what's the most important thing to add to that? Can I, can I ask a, a quick question? Because mm -hmm. um, this is one of the things that's been pending as an open issue a long time for Express. So I think the do you mentioned the domain, it got moved to the foundation at some point, but there were some open questions about whether or not we have a, the Cloudflare account moved over. Uh, that would be maybe another thing to add to this list. Sorry, I just, I, I know I'm a little bit late on the, the topics of things that should be maybe infrastructure offered, but the Cloudflare or some other services like that might be things to add. I tossed a link in the chat just as the express open discussion from I think many years ago that still hasn't been resolved. Um, cool. I'm, I think probably Brian, Brian or I can look into that today. I guess it's only a year old, but it felt like a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> They age very quickly, issues. Um, okay, so, so coming up with a good description of what's, what's available right now for projects, um, that seems like a, a relatively uh, easy, non-controversial thing to create. Um, the other one I would maybe throw on the list since it's a particular interest is, you know, is what do we? What does the foundation currently do in terms of certificates? Um, you know, I know there's been discussion of Let's Encrypt, and so, but that actually requires like quarterly updates, and and it's not it's not obvious how that is easy to keep up with, right? Because it now means you got to do something every three months, which is reasonably frequent. Mm -hmm. I believe. There were some, there are quite a few searches, I believe, that needed to be uh, renewed for JF Foundation. And if I recall correctly, because this actually, this happened before I came on, uh, but from speaking with people, I believe we just got a two-year cert on most of those. Um, just to, you know, it puts the problem two years down the road, but at the same time, it's not happening every three months. Right, and that, that would be like, you know, if we, if if it the, if that's going to be our approach, it should be just like, hey, okay, just ask, and you know, the foundation pays for the cert, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a fairly reasonable ask. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah, <certainly laughs> something we and can it, all get. And and from my mind, it's kind of like the, you know, 
forcing something to be done every three months with the risk of it not getting done, it's worth a little bit of money to just get it for two years and not have to worry about it, right? That was what we were thinking, yep. And you were saying that the foundation can actually be, I guess, like so that the bills go directly to them in some way, right? Yeah, I mean, far and away, that is the easiest for, for all of these things. Once we settle on what the, uh, what the services ought to be, uh, choosing things that have a where we can set up a direct billing arrangement, mm -hmm. um, it just makes it so much easier for everybody involved. Right. So it's like you know we got we got a little bit of time, but it, you know I think for the the node one it would be worth exploring if what we're doing already fits into that. Because mm -hmm. um, there's this guy, you know Rod said hey we could try looking at Let's Encrypt, but I think if the foundation is just like hey we can pay it's not that expensive it's probably easier not to have to worry about all that extra automation and and there's issues about wildcard certs and stuff. So I don't know how we could get, you know, what's the next step in getting towards a, here's what the foundation will do by default for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, that's fundamentally the outcome of this discussion plus also what we've been discussing at the board in the strategy sessions too. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, looking at like as a tangible next step, that would be one to say like, if we can we write that down and say, here's our preferred, here's our preferred certificate management for a project. You can do something else, and we'll you know mm -hmm. potentially still pay. But here's the, here's what we think is easiest for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once we get that documented, I, I think the path here for anything that involves um, anything that involves budget would be for us to get it documented here through. Uh, through this meeting, yep. and then figure out um, if this makes sense, and then put it together as a proposal for the board, and then it becomes a, you know, a line item in the budget. And yep. then once the board gives the go-ahead, then really it's just a matter of actually getting everything done. So uh, it should be reasonably straightforward to get from here to there. Okay. So who has an action to do what for the next step on that one? So I, I mean, I think the next step here is probably for Jory and I to get together and um, clean up the list and, and put it into something which resembles a proposal uh, that we can then get back together and review. And then once we've got that, then it's a matter of getting it on the agenda for the board, which I know the person who does that, so that should be pretty easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, you know. <laughs> Narrative voice. It was Brian. Um, <laughs> so uh, it, yeah, I mean, it, I think that's probably our next step. Okay, Let's sounds good. And with a, probably with like in that case, I you know want to get it back into the issue where we're talking about certs and just get some feedback from the rest of the community members. But yeah, Michael, is there anything? Are there any certs that are in imminent danger of expiring? Well, I think it's three months. Okay. So it's not, it's, you know, we've got our, hey, an email, hey, it's going to expire. There's, yeah, I can point you at the issue here. I'll, I'll find it. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. I, I know that I've seen it. I just don't know where. <laughs> yeah, here. Thank you. Uh, it was like over the weekend even that it came out. So let me find that. But I'll, I'll paste it in the minutes in a minute. There you go. Cool. Great. Thank you. So does this group of people, um, it, you know, assuming that, um, for example, Brian and I get together and, and come up with um, that menu, so to speak, the description and menu of, of what's available now, do we want to meet again um, to to address this? Is this something that, is this a group of people that wants to um, meet on some kind of recurring basis? Um, do we want to work ad hoc? Who wants more meetings on their calendar? <laughs> yeah. I think that personally, what could be a good first step would be some sort of either um, survey or outreach to all the individual projects to surface the kind of information that we need to know to make decisions. 
Um, I feel like something like that um, can be done asynchronously without a meeting. Mm -hmm. We can meet after we have some research. Um, does that seem reasonable to individuals? I think definitely getting more data on that, that makes sense. Although it's, is it that, like do we, is it that a survey where we ask questions or are there people who actually know what the infrastructure is? I'm just thinking like, what's the most effective way to get the information? Is it a survey? Is this what I'm not 100% sure on? Well, from my experience, the only way to get um, information from some of these some folks is to to just go ask them directly. Um, I haven't had just a boatload of success sending, you know, a Google survey out and getting um, a lot like uptake from everybody, but going out and asking uh, really active maintainers and all of the projects for 10 minutes is basically how I'm able to get any information. <laughs> yeah, like a, tell us about your build infrastructure for, yeah. you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then whoever's meeting with them writes it all down. And then, then you've captured what hopefully what yeah. you're going to get, right? Yeah. That's, uh, and, and like I said, that's why I was kind of suggesting like, like onboarding, the onboarding process is one way to do that because I've already yep. kind of planned a uh, planned to at least capture uh, one one kitten from each of these projects for and thirty uh, to hopefully get the get that information. But. I mean, the other the other approach would be like to tackle each of these. You know, we've talked about say DNS. Uh, credential management, um, like to try and tackle it based on each of those topics, as opposed to trying to go and get like, tell me everything about your build infrastructure, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes that means it's hard to get, either you get a fire hose or you, you get a high level summary. Yeah. Like if we went to, if we, if, if we, you know, we put together that list that says, here's the services that are already available and then we validated that those were a fit or not fit with the existing projects by figuring out whether they're using them, not using them, doing something completely different or. I like that actually. I like that. I like that um, way of looking at it. You know, sort of like the certificate one, you could go and say, how do you manage your certificates? Ah, oh, mm -hmm. well, do you want us to help by doing this or, or no, mm -hmm. we want to do it. You know, it sort of validates what you've got to. It seems less like, also it's, it's less challenging perhaps for, for a project to say, yeah, I can, I can tell you. How we're doing it's so a smaller stuff. bite size ask. That's, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I would also just suggest too, that we, we may want to consider the difference between what legacy projects use or existing projects use and what we recommend new projects use. Yeah. Uh, because we may uncover in some of this, that there's some convoluted processes or that there are um, vendors being used that, uh, you know, through some particular relationship, uh, that the use of that vendor can't be expanded, or at least not at the price that a project is getting it. Um, and we wouldn't want to disturb, you know, if there's no. a convoluted process, it's convoluted for a reason. We wouldn't want to disturb that just for the sake of getting everybody the same. But at the no. same time, we don't want to replicate it either. No, no, no. I, I don't think any of this should be, you're forced onto it. It's just like, Hey, here's what we're recommending for new projects. If this makes sense to you, you know, it's available. And, and if you want to switch over, then it's something we help, we help with. Right. Yep. Cause it comes down to that. You know, you can only, you can only economically support one or some small number of things. Right. And it's, and, and being part of the foundation is hopefully that we, we find something that's good and get some economies of scale. So, mm -hmm. Yep. And yeah. So if, if you so if, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. If you, I know 
speaking from a maintainer perspective, if you came to me with this survey, one of the first things I would ask other than the ones that I've already brought up would be this question that uh, Sandil posted in here about physical infrastructure for CI stuff. Has that been covered in the meeting? I know I was late, so has that been covered otherwise in this meeting? Nope. No. That's sort of under, we said build was an area, but and it would fit under that, but we haven't dived into it. Okay, because that would definitely be probably the number one thing on my list as a maintainer of things that I'm looking for. So I'm sure you'll probably get that feedback. And if we don't have a good answer or direction, at least, um, you know. Right, we did, we did talk about like if a, if a bunch of people were using Travis, which kind of fits into that, but it's... I think we talked about that in the package maintenance working group a little bit. And I, and I'm actually, I've got some opinions first because GitHub actions just opened up. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, there's other options. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and also I think though, neither of those solve the other types of things like what, what he was talking about here, which is things that are not provided by CI providers. So I'm, you know, I, I have one idea in mind right now. Um, but I think there's probably a lot that different projects have with that aren't going to be like, oh, use Travis, oh, use GitHub Actions. Um, so right. like having virtual machines um, or something. That's certainly that something one. I could see where it's like, you know, through like the, the, the Node community has done a really good job of getting volunteers. You could imagine the OpenJS Foundation working to get volunteer resources for its member projects. And then when you come, it's like, yeah, okay, we can give you a VM from here or whatever. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. So there's two projects that I'm kind of thinking about here. One is not really an OpenJS uh, foundation thing yet, but it's that uh, NPM uh, sort of proxy registry thing, which will help would, would help distribute load, and that requires some infrastructure. The other one is um, doing two-factor auth publishing for NPM packages. So this is another thing that Express is interested in, but would require at least an API. The, the solutions that we were looking at would require some API consistently running somewhere to handle some orchestration. So those would be two very concrete use cases where uh, having some infrastructure provider that was sort of ironed out and hopefully free, but if not free, you know, at least uh, easily, you know, manageable financially. Right. So um, it is just about one before the top of the hour, and I do have a hard stop. Um, but I do I have also these two um, notions of next steps: this description document um, and some some data gathering process. Is everybody okay with the um, action items out of this meeting being that Brian Warner and I will? Um, connect and, and put a plan forward for the data gathering and also a um, document for your uh, review on that description of what's available now. Uh, and then we can, um, we can asynchronously take a look and um, set a next meeting. Is that, does that capture what? Uh, Sounds good to me. Cool. Um, I'll also uh, post this, uh, this video um, here in about an hour. Uh, I've got a couple more meetings that left this afternoon, but I'll post the video along with the summary of notes uh, to the issue um, and to YouTube. Ruby? Sounds good. All righty. Thank you all very much for your time. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Monday. Right. Thanks. Thank you, George. Yep, right. Bye. 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 Thanks, y'all.